when I think about a community activist, I, I think about one that is concerned, uh, one that is dedicated, one that is for change. For 22 years, my platform has been about making a difference in the lives of others. And I realized that, you know, uh, it's not about popularity, it's not about money, it's not about what I'm going to get out of it. But at the end of the day, it's about helping somebody reach their plateau. And when that is done and said, that's what it's all about, is being a blessing to someone else. And so for 22 years, that's what my platform has been about, is making a difference in the lives of others. And I remember uh, Pastor Timothy William from a young child, age of eight approximately, uh, from Memorial Church of God in Christ. And he, in my, New Brockton, Alabama, in my opinion, he was an evangelistic entrepreneur because he was doing a lot of things at that age that most young kids did not do. You could tell that he had a love of family. And I must uh, mention his mother, Rosa, because she was the thread that knitted and kept the family together because she was a single parent. And I remember Tim did not know how to play the drum but he was uh, willing to learn. And that's one of the most important things I remember about him, that he engaged in many different uh, evangelistic things. And so he began to play the drum. And in order to, did not know music, in all the way to play the drum, my father would sit and give him, pat his foot to the beat of the songs, and he picked up that. And, he, and actually he became the most important drummer. thing, that he was very, very interested in the young people in this community and other communities in the church, he was very interested. And they began to uh, get a group, and the group to, uh, together from New Broughton uh, Church of God in Christ, also from uh, Elba. But they all came together and they would work. They would go out into the neighborhood of the city and begin to do ministry with the young people. And also, they were. Uh, uh, young Timothy will, will be the instigator of these. For some reason, he just had that leadership spirit, and they will follow him. He would do the planning, and they would do the following. And so that's why I say he was an evangelist entrepreneur. I met Pastor Timothy Williams in 1991. He had a youth center in Elba, Alabama, and he worked with youth and doing mentoring, education, recreation. He worked as far as trying to get the youth to better themselves and their community by doing community service work. My part in his uh, ministry was to just help him mentor children as well and also to um, give supplies whenever the need was there. He also worked with uh, Mr. George Tabb with the 4-H program, and the kids were involved in a lot of 4-H programs as far as uh, speaking engagements, just giving the young children a chance to see what was available outside of Elba, Alabama, and to just bridge the gap between what Elba had to offer and what they didn't the surrounding community came in and tried to provide for Pastor Williams and the children and give them what they needed. He has done a wonderful job. He has been instrumental in helping to just raise up the awareness for children to let them know that there are opportunities outside of Elba, Alabama, and for that matter, outside of Alabama, period, that the uh, world was theirs and they could seize it. And Pastor Williams just tried to give them an opportunity to seize that world. Because growing up in a single parent home, uh, what really motivated me uh, is because I didn't have no father figure in my life. Mother was the father and the mother. And, you know, it was kind of hard going to school and playing sports and your mother would be there, but your father wouldn't be there to support you because being a young man, uh, a lot of young guys, you know, they, they expect for their father to be there in support. And growing up, I didn't have none of that. And it, and it bothered me. It bothered me. It began to show up in my attitude. And 
And, you know, I'll never forget one day I began to pray and ask the Lord, you know, God, you know, give me what to do, you know, to help our young men. And I was in school. I started a basketball program, started working with the guys. And the Lord gave that vision to me, and, and, the, and, and the Lord began to bless it. You know, I began to give back. I began to look at our youth and look what can I do. And a lot of times, you know, you'll hear a lot of people talk about what they can do, but I tell people all the time, action speaks louder than words. So when the Lord gave me the vision, I began to act upon it, and I began to move expediently. And I also remember uh, that they served the young people not only in uh, New Brockton, but in Elba also. He was, uh, he had a basketball team going on, and he took the young people to different places to uh, play basketball, and I uh, went to see them play here in New Brockton, Alabama. Had a very uh, good basketball team and good basketball players. They also uh, engaged in uh, uh, feeding uh, the, pe the young kids, giving them lunch, and I also uh, vaguely remember they have it, had a big day for the young people in Elba. And at that time, I'm thinking Channel 4 came out and, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and televised it, as therefore, and so they, and he had a place in Elba called Mulberry High School that he brought the young children there, tutored them, and did games and things with them, and ministered to them, and I don't know why it was shut down, but I really don't know what caused it to be shut down. I remember years ago, my son Tim, we brought young kids to my house, and they'd go back there in the back room and have a talk show, and he just loved to work with kids. He'd been doing that all of his life, working with young kids, try to get them off the street so they won't get in on trouble. Had a youth center in Elba, and therefore, and they were there for us uh, several years. You know, I never seen him pull back on any challenges that, that confronted him because he, he has the mind to do and he does it regardless of what comes forth, come before him, you know, whatever obstacles I would say that come before him. He's strong, he's very strong and he's very dedicated. That's when the other youth training center came about. We started playing basketball up at the uh, Mulberry Park and, and we didn't have nowhere else to go and practice and we would practice at the old Mulberry park and kids will come from everywhere just to shoot basketball and, and then we formed not just one team but two teams and, and it gave the kids something positive to do and, and a lot of kids were able to go out of town and do different things and, and from there the youth center was erected and we started doing things in the old Melbourne building and having classes like rap sessions and, and we started educating our kids and teaching the kids you know what I'm saying, and had things for them to do. It gave them a safe haven away from home, something positive that they can get into, and, and it helped them to, you know, push and reach for their dreams and let them know that, hey, you can be whatever you want to be. You don't have to settle for what life throws at you. Um, back in about, I'll say about 22 years ago, young man came to my door Timothy Williams, and um, he said, I, I have a dream. And I said, and? And he said, I want this community, Rolanda, to have a youth center. And I said, what does that have to do with me? He said, I need you. And I said, why? He said, because you can understand my dream, and I have faith that you'll help me, and you'll help me in the right way. And I said, OK, Tim. I uh, will do this thing. And at that time, we had no money. At the time, you know, we were getting ready to start. I think we had just applied for a grant, or Timothy had just applied for a grant. And he said, so, well, you know, I said, well, I have this degree, so let's use this degree thing to give us more money. And we started the Elba Youth and Training Center. And so the Elba Youth Training Center was a great outlet for the kids. We even had rap sessions where we talked about peer pressure. We talked about different type of diseases. And we talked about different things just to educate our kids because they need to know what's out there, what's going on in the real world, you know. And, 
and and we even we even went on tours and took them to the prisons and i know now it's not popular now to take kids to the prison but we took kids they had trips to the prison they were able to go different places and to see that hey this is real you know and, and, and my thing was, is to let the young people know that just because you grew up in the hood does not mean, it does not mean that you have to be like your environment. And that was one of the things that we taught the kids is that you don't have to be like everybody else, but you can be who God has called you to be. I remember helping my brother, Timothy Williams, at the Elba Youth Training Center here in Elba, Alabama. We had a game room. We had a candy store. We had the pool tables up in there. We did cooking. My brother has a love for kids. He wanted to keep them out of trouble. He traveled with them different areas, um, taking them to places, to the water world, to the prison, to show how the other inmates was living and didn't want them to turn to being bad or getting into trouble, but he has the passion for kids. He always fit his hands to do things and help children and talk to people to tell them they can do better. They can change their lives. They can or want stuff in life. When I think about my brother, Timothy Williams and community service, first thing comes to mind is that he always wanted to make a difference in the lives of children and the lives of people um, in general. Um, he always saw that there was, there was a need and he always has been doing um, something, uh, whether it be in the um, community of Elba or whether it was an op. Um, started out, I remember after he gave his life to Christ, he started out at the school having prayer um, early in the morning. I remember that. And then after that, the next thing I remember was the um, Elba U Training Center. He was involved and he started that and had people, brought different people in. So service he's always been doing, even when he was in church, of course. Um, he just always been doing service. Um, again, I just like to say that he has a heart for people not just kids, but people in general. And he saw a need um, from having outside service in the community of, of Elba, um, from serving the people, uh, Thanksgiving, feeding the uh, families, less fortunate families that didn't have, um, from doing back to school bash and op where it started. And he has done it in Elba as well. He's always doing something, always trying to encourage people and lend a helping hand. And you know, my thing is that a lot of people had great dreams and they had great uh, ambition. They started out, you know, doing things and said, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and have meetings, but they never followed through with it. And my thing was, is that Whatever God gives me, I've got to follow through with it. Because, yes, sometimes you become burnt out. Yes, sometimes you feel like quitting. You, you feel like giving up because you don't have the support that was told to you. Or people, you know, they stopped. They became, you know, jealous of you. They stopped helping you. But I tell people all the time, that does not give you the right to just give up and quit, you know. Just because you didn't get the support that you thought you should have gotten, you know, so what? God has given the task to you to carry it out. And so I've always told myself that whatever God gives me, I'm going to give it my best. I'm going to do everything that God intended for me to do because I can't quit, you know. Um, at that time, I think uh, Lenwin Heron is his name and Commissioner Ernest Brooks backed us with the Dream Team grant and we just began to have different programs for the young people. Uh, we had tutoring. Not only did we tutor, we taught discipline. We talked to the young men about self-esteem, self-awareness, being aware of who they were and how they impact what goes on in the, the community. So that was 22 years ago. Timothy had faith in me all those 22 years ago 
And we've kind of been partners ever since. Any endeavor he wants to undertake, we kind of partner up. He's a good, outstanding role model of what a man should be in this community. He, he's not only is he a pastor, he's a good husband, a good father, a good leader in this community. And I am proud to be a part of this documentary on his behalf, in his behalf, in his favor. And it's so refreshing to be able to say some positive things about an individual. And this young man has, has done great things in this community most of the time at his own dime. In other words, with his own money. He doesn't want any recognition for it. When I think about my husband and his service that he has done and is still doing for the last 22 years, I think about his dedication, his drive that he has to help the youth. Not only the youth, but just help anybody that needs help that comes in his path. Um, I think about the love that he has. He's very caring. He just goes the extra mile for anybody that he man can. that loves the Lord. He loves his family and he displays that through the work that he does or the service that he does in the community. He shows love. He shows love in everything that he do. He's faithful. Um, thank God for him and I love him and thank you for your work, your service that you do for all communities, just not Elba, but all communities. So yes, yes, sometimes you will become frustrated, you'll become aggravated because things didn't go the way that you thought they ought to win. And, and there were times when I felt like quitting. I, I, I said sometimes, that, hey, I ain't doing this no more. But God always come through and he always encourages my, my heart and, and tell me, he would tell me, tell me it's not about you, but it's about you know, me being glorified because I chose you to carry out this task. And, you know, sometimes we tend to forget that because we think it's about us. And I'll never forget, there were hard times, you know. We came across a lot of hard times, a lot of uh, bumps in the road, and you know, carrying the kids here and there, times out of my pocket, you know. I would go to work in the summertime, and this is when I, I formed the youth center, you know, I would have to put in a whole lot, you know, and to give. And, you know, I was just constantly giving. And, you know, when you become a community active, it's a lot about giving. You have to give of your time. You have to give of your resources. And, and you have to give. I mean, you, you can't be a stingy person doing, you know, community work and, and making a difference. And so um, it was about giving. And so to make a difference, you have to be willing to give. And and so, and, and I made that my motto is that whatever I do, I'm going to give my best in everything that I do and say because I want to be pleasing to the master. I remember when Pastor Williams had orchestrated the youth center, it was, it was back then, it was a lot of things to do for the youth and for the community. He, he used to have us coming in, we used to, we used to pray together. We used to start our days off praying together. And then after we would pray, we would get involved in the community. You know, teach the kids things. And um, we, we used to bring in education, tons of fun. And that's when everybody used to get along. See, the youth center connected our community. We came together, we had food, we, we used to go on trips, we used to have activities going on to the point to where nobody had room enough for negativity. And see, it brought a lot of positive impact to our community. And that's the things that we need to get back to. And you know, being a community active, it's, it's a calling. You know, you, you gotta be called to do it because you know, some folks will get up under your skin, they'll say things to you, They'll, they'll do things to you, try to hurt you, and, it, and if you ain't called to it, you'll react in a way that's not, you know, uh, not godly, or you would, you will say something back to them, and, and in order to, to reach people, you've got to be an example of what you say, you know, and that's very big in being a community active. You got to be, you got to be uh, an example of what you tell people. You know, I can't I can't be a mentor to people when 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 I'm not 
doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm out here doing everything and anything and talking about I'm going to lead some people, you know, because kids mimic what they do. I, I'll and never forget when I started the youth center, we began to get uh, different grants and we began to get uh, computers into the building. And we started doing things and with the kids and gave them pretty much something to do. And, and, and you know, it, it just touched my heart because, you know, just to be a blessing and to do something and to give that time and to give back to kids. If we all could just give back and, and, and not just look on the things of ourselves, but look on the things of others, God will begin to pour out into our See, Pastor Williams been a great role model in our community, and he's a veteran to our community. And I just want to thank him for all the things that he's done because that kept a lot of kids off the streets. That kept a lot of kids from getting in trouble. When the youth center was going on, people looked forward to going to the youth center because it gave them hope. It gave them something to look forward to. It created ideals for their future. And that's what we need now. And so now we're looking to get things back going like that. And Pastor Williams, He's, he's always been a great friend, a great role model, and an awesome pastor. And, and I just want to thank him from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. We took trips like to Waterworld, down to the beach. And, and I, I'll never forget, Miss Burks would always allow us to use her van. And, and I would take her van and I would pick up the kids and and take the kids down to Panama City Beach and we'd go down there early in the morning and spend all day in barbecue and the kids just had fun. And it was just a blessing, you know, it was just a venture. You know, I got other guys that participated like Jimmy Searcy and uh, my brothers and sisters and like Rolanda Jones, which is, you know, councilwoman now, but she was involved in a big way with our youth program starting off the ground. She did all our paperwork and it was just a, it was just a blessing and, and able to give the kids something to do because remember, there was nothing productive. I mean, we had no resources. There, there were things that, there was not a center here for the kids to, to go to and, and play basketball. Mobile Heights was not, was not even fortunate to have a, a gymnasium for the kids to go and play ball. And, to, to commune and to, you know, have fun. And so there was nothing. So we began to create things for the youth to do. And, and we did it because we were trying to save, you know, our community and, and, and give the kids something to look forward to instead of hanging on the street corners and, you and know, doing God, God for, the, you know, for the opportunity to be able to, you know, be a blessing and to make a difference and to have impact a lot of kids, you know, I, I can't even tell you how many kids I've mentored over the 22 years. It's a lot. I mean, a lot of kids I've, I've mentored. Now some of them are grown and, and I'm still doing it, you know, in the program and, and able to see my kids for 15 years. My kids were able to, you know, be a part of my life and community, community work, you know. Um, I allowed my whole family to participate, my, my family. I thank God for my wife because, you know, when I got married, she could have said, well, I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. But my wife joined forces and we began to give and to do. And, and I'll never forget coaching basketball. My wife will come and, and I remember my daughter, my oldest daughter, Melissa, she was real young. And, and they would come to my basketball game and she would get out there and play around. And, and she lived a life around basketball for 15 whole years. You know, daddy coached basketball. He was active in the community doing different things. And, and everywhere I went, my whole family went and my family participated. And I taught my kids how to give and how to give back because it's our reasonable service that, you know, God has called to us to give. When God bless us, he intends for us to bless others. And so it's about giving back. You know, I was raised as a young man to to give back no matter what it's time for you to you know learn to give and my mother taught us how to give and she raised us up in the fear of God and I just like to really commend him uh, the good work that he had done and I know that he's yet doing good work because when he left uh, from around here he went to op and began uh, began to do great ministry work there 
And also, I would like to say that in, in a lot of his evangelistic ministry, he did not really have what you would call uh, support. A lot of these things he was doing just because of his uh, wanting to do them and had that uh, urge, I would say, to do it. Uh, so therefore, he went out and he began to uh, do evangelizing just on his own without help from others. And I, I remember back in 2004, um, I left Elba and I went to Op. And the reason I went to Op was uh, the Lord had called me to start a ministry there in Op. And so when I went to Op, I began to ask the Lord, I said, now God, what can I do, you know what I'm saying, to, to uh, help the kids in the community there in Op, Alabama? And, and the Lord reminded me, he said, now Tim, do the same thing that you did back in Elba when you used to work, you know, with the kids in Elba. And so uh, I started a uh, after school program in the city of Op, and, and you know, when we first got there and and one thing about the after school program, we begin to work with the elementary schools and the uh, middle schools in op. And uh, I can remember the principal telling me that, you know, one of the principals at the uh, elementary school, he began to tell me, he says, now Tim, what can we do to, you know, help kids uh, bring their grades up? Because kids were failing. I mean, they had failing grades. And, and I began to propose to them about the tutoring program. And, so the principal got involved and the uh, superintendents got the superintendent got involved and and so they began to support the after school program and and we would run the program from three to five every day monday through friday and and kids were just coming and 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 all the kids were looking for they were looking for someone to spend that time with them that quality time and be a mentor to them and, and there were kids from all over you know we had over a hundred kids a day come into the program and we would feed the kids and, and we would give them, you know, something positive to do and something that was constructive and, and just volunteer at our time. We had volunteers and, and, you know, and we started seeing kids' grades come up from Fs and Ds. Kids were making As and Bs and, and you know, and the principal and of the elementary school and the middle school and the superintendent, they were amazed because, you know, kids' grades started coming up and after that, you know, we started doing uh, basketball. We started uh, forming basketball teams. And, and you know, and the teams would, when we formed the teams, they would come to Elba and we would play at the Elba Rec Department. And we had like three or four teams, you know. Kids were just coming out of the woodwork because it gave the kids something, you know, positive to do. The thing that I remember about Pastor Timothy Williams is when he first came to Op, he, had, he was driving the bus, he had um, started the at the school program, kids came, you know, they enjoyed it. They had bad grades, then they came up with the good grades. Um, then uh, East Day Hunt, you know, it was fun. The kids enjoyed it, parents enjoyed it, you know. One of the challenges that I faced was in our uh, going forth doing community services was that uh, we had a daughter that was born with a rare brain disorder. And through that whole process, you know, uh, it was rough, but we didn't give up. We kept doing community service, we kept pushing, we kept doing ministry, and you know, and it's kind of funny because Destiny lived to be nine and a half, you know, months old, and my assignment in art was nine and a half, nine and a half years. And when I look back at time, when I look back at different things, and you know, how all of it's lining up and you know I just thank God because it was trying times you know uh, it was rough you know but you know when I, when I look at nine and a half months you know with my daughter you know back and forth we were going through a lot of things and, and you know and now when I look back and I look at how you know the ministry ran and up and I was there only for nine and a half years and I compare nine and a half years with nine and a half months, just the time, you know what I'm saying, the numbers, and I'm saying, oh my God, you know, and you know, God kept us through all of that, you know, and I'm just... I was just like, wow, I mean, they just enjoyed it. People came from back to school bath. Oh, they loved the back to school bath. I mean, he had brought a lot of folks in. He brought in the football players, you know, he talked with the kids. You know, I mean, he he loved kids and 
the kids and George here. Watching, you know, little Destiny, you know, she was fighting for her life. And it really taught me a valuable lesson is that anything worth having is worth fighting for, you know. And that was one of the, you know, uh, crises that hit us. But, but we didn't give up. You know, you had those that was watching and saying, oh, he's going to quit now because, you know, this is going on in his life and he's going through this. But we kept our faith in God and we kept pushing. And, you know, we kept first project in the city of Ob. We did a Easter egg hunt and we took it to the softball field in the community up in Gavin Street. And, and the kids from the church, they began to do mind dance and and you know, out on the field, and, and people started coming from everywhere. I mean, the people enjoyed it. They were they were suspicious. Let's let's go up there to the park up there and let's see what's going on in the community, what Evangelist Temple is doing in the community. And you know, and people came from all over. They lined the fence there. I mean, people were having a, a good time. Everything was positive, you know, and uh, and you can see all the kids that came out, and you know, and we were able, we were able to feed everybody and. And the kids also begin to hunt eggs. And it was just something positive. You know, you hear about a lot of negative things, but we wanted to bring some positive things into the community. We are the Wind Girls. And we would like to say thanks for your service, From there, we began to do different things. We started doing the uh, um, back to school bash. We started bringing in different people, you know. Uh, James Logan, which was a uh, former NFL football player. Ronald McKinnon, he came and, and you know, and they came and they did autographs and they began to talk with the kids to motivate them and encourage them to, you know, reach for their dream. And it was just something to, you know, let the kids know you can dream big. You can be whatever you want to be. And so from there, we started having different things. I mean, in the community, uh, like the uh, Dr. Martin Luther King March, we, we helped organize that. And, and we began to march and the young kids came from, you know, from all over the community, from other cities. And, you know, it was just a great event. And we, you know, it was a, it was to encourage the kids, you know, go back and study your history and, you know, and let them know that, hey, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., he, he, he paid a major price, you know. We just got involved. I mean, we got involved in the community. And one thing about it, I love doing, you know, community service. I love what I do because I love people and I, I enjoy it. So in the city of Ob, we, we did a lot of things. I mean, just to engage and to encourage the kids and, and to let them know that, hey, you have someone in your corner, you know, that's pushing for you. I was gone from Elba for about uh, nine and a half years, came back here in 2013. And we brought the back to school bash that we used to do on off. And then I started a day camp um, here in the city of Elba. It went great. We did a lot of things with the kids. Took a lot of trips, uh, went fishing. We just did things to motivate the kids because in the summertime, kids didn't have anything to do. And, and you know, and it gave them something positive to do and uh, something that would, you know, keep their minds occupied because I, I use the term, a uh, Idle Mind is a Devil's Workshop, and so the summer day camp gave the kids something positive to do for like, you know, six weeks, and we did different things. Uh, going fishing, we went fishing, we went swimming, uh, we took trips to the museum, we, we went a lot of places, went to different businesses in Elbow, Chamber of Commerce, let the kids, you know, hear about a little history of Elbow, you know, the Chamber of Commerce about the jailhouse. Um, we, we, we did a lot of exciting things, you know, and then um, we were able to take the kids swimming uh, to Enterprise. And then we did a preseason basketball uh, uh, program for the kids to get the kids familiar with basketball. That went great. We took trips to the Capitol. Then I was able to get in contact with some people to help, you know, uh, get some sack lunches and feed the kids. And, and the Lord came through for us, and we were able to feed the kids. It's been 20-something years since we had a sack lunch program, and we were able to do it um, at the Elbow Recreation Department, and we were able to incorporate that into the uh, Elbow Citywide Day Camp. We fed over 2,000 meals last summer, and, and kids just came out of the woodwork, and we have a good time. What I like about camp is we go swimming, and we eat lunch. I like the food, and... You must have the children.
Pastor Tim was able to get sack lunches starting here again in Elba. I can remember sack lunches when I was seven, eight years old, and I'm 30, 31 years old. This is a really great program to keep the, for something for the kids to do every day to keep them from being on the streets. They can come here, play basketball, it, pretty much anything. We take kids to join the program every day, being able to work with the kids, all different ages. It's just real wonderful. So you're having fun, right? Man, I let them put some fun. And I heard about it. What we like about this is that we get to go on fun trips and we get to mostly play. Tell other kids about Elbow Citywide Day Camp. Hey, I ain't gonna we get to eat, go on trips, we play a lot of basketball, you know. That's what I love about it. I thank God for allowing me to be able, you know, to be in the lives of our young people and to be a positive role model for them and, and to let them know that, hey, the sky is the limit. You can be whatever you want to be, but you got to be willing to push. You got to be willing to put up a fight. You just can't quit, you know, because, you know, in life, you know, you're not going to always win. You're not going to always lose. But we must understand that you can't win everything, you know. But you got to be persistent at it. You can't give up. You got to have a fighting attitude. You got to get back up, pushing even harder, you know. And, you know, and I thank God for the 22 years that, I, you know, I was able to impact and to be a blessing. You got to always to remember God. where you come from and to be willing to give back and to help others. And I believe that is a great legacy.